click this button. In theory, we should be live on Twitch. Let that play out. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Sipe. How are you today, my friend? Fantastic. Doing good. How That's about you? Name. I can't complain. I mean, it's it's going to be very warm here in the Midwest. I, I heard rumors that it could be as warm as 70, which I don't know how to do Celsius conversions. I can think in a lot of other, I can think in kroners. I can think in pounds. I can think in meters. <laughs> I can't think in Celsius. The only thing I know is like 20s are nice and, and high teens yeah. are nice in 30s yeah. are not. So I know the extremes, but I don't know anything. I don't know what 70 is, but I know tomorrow is going to be very nice here, at least in Minnesota. I'm very excited. About it. I grilled yesterday. Um, that's that's how nice the weather is in Minnesota, at least. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. No, I think we got about around the same temperatures here. I I, I think uh, twenty twenty one C is the temperature you're talking about. Roughly. Is that the magic so number? I know that one. Yeah, I think so. Somewhere I'm, sure, I'm sure I could ask a device and something in my house could <laughs> tell me what that is, but uh, <laughs> that, right, that'd be a lot right. of work. You know, it, it's. I I don't know if you remember years ago we had that that polar vortex thing, and oh, I yeah. tweeted out a a photo or a screenshot of one of my weather apps and one of my european based friends said i was going to ask you if that was celsius and fahrenheit and then i realized it didn't matter you know, it was so cold right. they, they cross over so, so. <laughs> that's fantastic yeah well ken for for any of our, our viewers here who have no idea who you are which i can't imagine how that's possible what's your what's your bio what's your background who are you and uh you know what what do you do for fun oh whew. uh yeah so name's ken site uh I've been working on software for a long time, 90s. Um, started in Java in 97. It's been a long time in Java. You sure it wasn't uh, Oak when you started? It, it could have been called Oak <laughs> if, if you go back that right. far. <laughs> you know, in the early days, you know, if I went way back uh, in, the, in the 90s, I was teaching for, uh, I was a consultant. So, you know, you, you, you end up playing different games and I was teaching for Rational, probably their first, you know, Rational Unified Process along with Rup and and uh, class, U, UML and class. I, I was young. I needed the money. Thank you very much. They said uh, it wouldn't be on the internet. <laughs> they, yeah, that's like, well, those days, that, you know, I guess What's I claim that now. That's sad. <laughs> uh, been working in enterprise architecture for a long time. Uh, about seven years ago, uh, was heading up research and development, looking at where the cloud's going to go. Actually, that was the, the, the question. It's like, hey, where, where's the cloud going to be in two to five years? So it's always fun to like, have that experience and then and then be you know five six years later but back then uh this was this would be around 2013 um you know we said uh, docker which was version 0.3 at the time <laughs> but docker uh mesos apache mesos and core os and core os was always the wild card because operating systems are super challenging to get into an enterprise environment it takes a while maturity and all that but um, you know, it, it, and, 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 you know, lo and behold, we, we fast forward seven years. Uh, I, I feel like, uh, the team that I was on, we, we pretty much nailed that. I, I, I can't, couldn't be happier actually. Um, it's not Mesos, although it could be, I mean, uh, and, 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 you know, it's always challenging when you actually use a brand because it's not really about the brand, right. it's really about the technology. So right. when Docker, I could care less whether it's Docker. We're talking about containers and containerization, which frankly was well before Docker uh, with Solar Zones and all kinds of stuff, uh, LXEs. Um, get into Mesos. Well, we're talking Kubernetes, and Kubernetes certainly has taken over. Uh, it's really challenging to do anything anymore, microservices or in the cloud, without at least having some strategy along those lines. Um, and then I would say the last two years, I've been uh, heads down writing code in that, well, six years I've been writing code in that space, but the last two years, uh, wholly focused on uh, Kubernetes and writing Go code. So I've been, it's kind of the space I'm in. Yeah. How do you, how do you, like, I, yeah, how do you like Go? I, I mean, I, I, it's funny, I, I have this distant memory of when we used to leave our homes and, and I was at this event and I, and a, a, gentleman asked me like how do i convince my manager to use go and, and i said well do you have any experience with go and he said yeah we had three projects used it and they failed and and i mm. of course don't think go was the reason why those projects failed i'm sure there was more to it but said, well i'm sorry mm -hmm. you're gonna have a hard time convincing your management to you know roll the dice a fourth time but but, but just curious what are your thoughts on go i mean i've, I've heard a lot of positives to be fair i, I don't bring up that story yeah, yeah. Bash go. i just thought it was an interesting anecdote 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could fail with anything. So absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Java, <laughs> JavaScript, Kubernetes, are. Docker, <laughs> you know, you, the list goes on and on. We can fail with literally any technology. We're any professionals. <laughs> yeah, professionals. We could fail hard and cost, you know, six figures or more. Of course. So, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, so you know what? I, I, maybe I'll make even some comparisons. Uh, I, I would say in the last, uh, so two years I've been writing Go. I actually started teaching or, or working with Go or had a Go workshop in 2014, which is interesting to think about. But I really wasn't focused. It wasn't my every day, sure. uh, and, and it certainly has evolved since then. I would say four or five years ago, I started writing a lot of Scala. So I add, I'm adding in another language to talk about, right? And I, I say that because I suspended my my uh, my inclination to make a ju early judgment, a snap judgment based on opinions, and I was going to have my own experience, if that makes sense. Sure. And the Scala world, I I. I I came away not really interested. I, I don't know how else I can say that. Um, there's a lot of cleverness to it. it but here's the thing, and it's actually probably a decent comparison. Um, in the Scala world, every you know, things are great when it's greenfield, when it's brand new. Uh, but the long-term stuff, the maintenance and management, or 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 the like, the number of things you have to have in your head at one time in order to know what's going on, right, is is high. Sure. Um, and the backward, the commitment to backward compatibility is not there, and to a certain extent, it's fast moving. Now that's relative. That's a really challenging thing to to flag, but it's it seems like there's this heavy interest in that interest is propelled with uh, academia, sure, um, not 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 pragmatic. You know, so if I look at languages that are a little bit more pragmatic, um, that would include Kotlin which mm -hmm. the focus is let's build out a language that I'm going to dedicate my whole company on right now. It's taken a whole new life in the Android world along with other things, but you know, getting JetBrains to come out and say, look, this, we need this for us. Right. Well, that's powerful. And, and, and go fits in that same category. It's like, it's very pragmatic. It's like, okay, how can I be C or C, close to C language? Uh, and, and people you know, want to dodge that it's not C. Okay, great. But it's, it's really close to low level. And, um, uh, and, and we want to base our company and our, and our projects on that. Um, there's lots of things to not like about Go, in my, you know, but uh, I like it. You know, the thing I love most about it, actually, the thing I love most about it is it's so dang readable. Like, sure. I, I don't know if I've ever looked at a Go project and, and couldn't, like, figure it out and grok it. Like, it's super, super readable, which is completely the opposite of a lot of Scala that I've looked at, right? You look at Scala, you're like, oh, what? What am I missing? <laughs> like, oh, you didn't look at this particular import that does this magic implicit. Sure. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> of course. Yeah, clever code is, is how people get hurt. There's no getting around that. I, I'm a big fan of don't be too clever with your coding. That's that's rarely ends well, to say the least. It's funny you mentioned grok. I, just this morning, I, my wife said, is that another made up word like grok? And I said, grok's a real word. And I, I have to be careful because I know she can hear me. But I did buy her flowers today, so I feel like I can get away with some stuff before. You know. I, I can almost see like a, a vase of flowers flying across. It's the possible. You in the head. It's possible. You know, then and one of one of the one of the flower vases is in fact on the desk behind me, so I, I probably do need to to mind my p's and q's. But Funny. yeah, I, as I recall, you did some Colin workshop talk type stuff too. Uh, you know, it not is, that long yeah. ago. How do you compare Colin into this whole scenario? Colin versus Java versus Go. Yeah, yeah. So, so to be fair, I I was doing Kotlin very early on too. Right. Like, I don't know, 2014 or 15 or somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and and you know, it wasn't popular then. It was just mm -hmm. getting out. And I used to call it, uh, oddly enough, I used to call it Scala minus minus. And <laughs> that, that that was meant to be positive. It, it right. took a lot of the really cool ideas and didn't make it clever, right? It, sure. Like, it took those really cool ideas and made it up. You know, I don't know. It's I really like Kotlin. Uh, it's been a long time since I've looked at it, so I don't know if I'd be fair to make additional comments at this point. But where it was when I was last looking at it was was stellar. I thought, man, this is like pulling in some really cool things, some small things from the groovy world, some really great things out of the Scala world, some you know some of their own things, and and made it a really powerful language. So I was I was very pleased with what I saw and the direction it was going. Um, and that's you know I. There's a lot of like a lot of things missing from Go, as as everybody likes to point out, right? It's got it doesn't have generics, although it's kind of on the way. And 
and in some ways I'm a little fearful, like, uh, meaning, you know, let's not, I don't know. There, there are things you want to be productive for sure, sure, but don't, let's not go too crazy. And I don't think they are like the, one of the things I like about it is that it's a, the, from a language standpoint, it's fairly slow moving language. Uh, and I, I say that, I think that's positive. I think that's a good thing. Um, uh, there's certainly uh, uh, there's certainly a commitment for backward compatibility, and in many ways that's what's made Java so strong. Right. Um, Java, you know, the, 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 there's been this window, uh, as as everybody probably listening is aware of, the window was Java stopping at eight for so long. Yes. Uh, and there was this need, you know, there, there, there's still drivers and nothing's happening. So within that, you know, right after that. There was this opening for Go and Kotlin and a bunch of other things right. that kind of flew out of that, um, and I, I think they're here to stay. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's, I think there's lots of value in that. It, it's it's um, interesting you talk about languages growing, and it makes me think of that period when Rails first appeared, and I remember seeing this this image where someone said, "Hey, here's here's the two books you need to be a productive Rails programmer, and here's this <laughs> massive stack of books you need to be a productive Java developer," and. Yeah. and what I think is funny about that is if you look now, there's an awful lot more to the Ruby and Rails community. Lots more things get thrown in there. That's sort of natural, right? I mean, we keep kind of adding on, oh, hey, this isn't here. Well, I got a gem for that. Or I, you know, it just kind of keeps building out. Same stuff right. is going to happen in all these languages. You know, oh, I love it because it's so small and condensed. Well, it, it'll it'll grow. And that some of that will be good. And some of that will be bad. <laughs> so, that's exactly. That's exactly right. Now, I know you as a technologist, but I know you weren't always in technology. In fact, I, I know at one point in your life, you, you used to go in these these sealed metal tubes that go underwater. Can can you are, are you allowed to talk about any of the things you, you did back then? Or is that is that strictly, you know, that's we'd have funny. to kill our viewer that's that's watching that or. You know, it's funny. I, I recently put a, a talk together uh, that it included some of experience I had back then. So I started out as a, a nuclear reactor operator in the United States Navy. Um, I was a react, you know, RO, reactor operator is what that stands for. And um, so I was doing some research, putting some stuff together. And there was recently someone who took a picture of maneuvering, essentially the panel. And uh, I shouldn't say recent, it was like 2016, if I remember the date right. But uh, they ended up, I think, going to jail. <laughs> like so. There are there's definitely there's definitely things you're not supposed to talk about or take pictures of, and a lot of that ties to oddly it, it ties to you can you can you can really fine tune a heat sinking missile to an exact temperature and oh, sure. knowing what your TAV is and stuff matters and things of that nature. But yeah, I used to I used to do that. I used to go in little tubes, go underwater, oh, punch holes. Did that help? Did that help prepare you for the pandemic that we've all been living through? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. This like, is not like all this room. <laughs> you you get stuffed down there with bacteria, and you just live with that bacteria for a long time. <laughs> you, in fact, you you recycle it. You keep breathing it out and sucking it back in, and you're like, there it is again. And uh, <clears throat> and then you 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 take your first breath coming out, oh. and you're like, what is this? <laughs> that, that's got to be a hoot. I, I read an article recently about whatever the the Soviet Union's large sub class was that it was big enough that they could actually put a swimming pool in it i'm sure it wasn't a swimming pool in the sense that we think of it as you know this was not an olympic length pool it was probably like a bath right? like a swim lane right yeah. right and you know you, you can go like a yard and back so you're just kind of floating i i don't know i have no idea but uh it, it that has to be a bit of a mental adjustment to be in such tight quarters with you know some number of other adults yeah, you know, for that period of time, yeah. uh, I can only imagine what what that's got to be like. Well, I didn't, I, I didn't have to endure much of that too much, actually. Uh, so I make jokes about it, but I was actually on a, I was special ops on a scientific sub, uh, so servicing instrumentation and such was most of my most of my work. It only held, I don't know, five to seven people max oh, exactly. in that sub. So yeah. Did did you ever have to go through that that ritual when you cross the? Oh, uh, the hard shell. Thank ritual. you. Ritual. I never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a scum sucking polywog and becoming a hard shell. Absolutely. Uh, I haven't. I haven't. I didn't enjoy that yet. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, there's still time, right? <laughs> yeah. A couple of years ago, I I managed to to have a, an event in South Africa, and I almost got to see that 
part of the world where the oceans switch over. You know, and it's mm. one of those things you don't think about until you're like, oh, yeah, obviously there is a line in the proverbial sand where it's now this ocean instead of that ocean. All right. That's a bit of a, a, bit of a, a, a twist there, but... No, I love that stuff. That's the exact stuff that fascinates me, actually, though, man. I re really, for real. Um, but one of my fascinations and hobbies, if you will, is is reading up on, on uh, you know, there's as a programmer, there's always like this exactness. Like there's always sixty seconds in a minute. There's mm -hmm. always, you know, there's this exactness that we that helps define reality. And I I love these areas where that's just not true. Like you sure. know, it's just it's not true. So in 2012, there was the first introduced leap second, right? We introduced yeah. a leap second, which brought down all kinds of servers because, well, time seems to be important. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, you know, another category in that same vein, uh, I love uh, this, this whole topic around uh, the, the title is uh, the geomagnetic polar reversal. So like every, every um I don't, it varies on the source, but somewhere between 300,000 years and, or so, uh, the North and South Poles switch. Yep. And, uh, and then it takes about uh, 150 years for the poles to fully switch. And during that time, there's North and South Poles like all over the earth. Great. Um, and being, yeah, yeah, right. So, you know, like the things that go through my head are just like, it's just crazy. Because I'm a pilot, as, yeah. as you know, but maybe a lot of people don't. Yes, yeah, what I do for fun, one of them is flying. And, you know, you get it's like North and South Poles everywhere. What what is going to happen in our world when this is you know when we go through this again? And right. we're overdue. That's right. the other great thing, right? We're we're overdue. Uh, I just it's great. Uh, like I I love as humans when we know with absolute assurity that something is true and it's not. <laughs> it's just not. Or like when it gets cold in Texas, and you know. We didn't think it'd get quite that cold. Oops. No. Well, they built their own problem. Uh, well, they they, they our, built their own problem. Friends, we I'll say that. It. I'll say that. Because, you know, I got solar panels on my house. It was a lot colder here than it was there. My solar panels still work. So, you know, it, you it's know, fascinating how that, that all plays out. Without question, the best thing we could possibly do is privatize everything because that won't fail. Right? <laughs> what could possibly <laughs> go wrong? What, oh, we want efficiency. It's out the yin-yang. We want this to be, uh, yeah, I whatever dude. well I, I saw some piece about the i don't remember the exact number but it was billions that, that uh, texans paid mm. extra because of the deregulation so the system works but uh well mr gibb is with us spencer gibb is joining us on our on our chat channel so hello spencer good to see you here my friend well virtually i i, I try to come up with a pithy way when i when i tweet out about these events and, and i say well we record in front of a virtual studio audience we just can't see them and we don't know if they're laughing unless they put something in the chat so if you think something's funny you know please laugh at us i should have a laugh track i've been doing this long enough you think i'd have like a button i could press and then there'd be laughter in the back i was just about to pull one up i, I, I can't read these well that's because you got you got your old man eyes going but i hear you i hear right. you <laughs> yeah it's, it's connected to some bluetooth uh, thing it's anyway fine. it's fine so how did you get into technology how did you decide that you know playing with computers sounds like more fun than being locked in a tube with with people Oh, that's an interesting question. I, I haven't had that asked in a while. I, I actually started um, working with computers when I was probably 12, um, maybe 11, 12, somewhere in like the neighborhood. Always fun when you're like a little bit further ahead than the teacher. The teacher would come in and teach, you know, and show off, hey, we're going to do basic. And I'm like, basic? All right. And they're done uh, and, that. They, and, they, and, and they just want to get a note to play right now where they're trying to put sprites with I still remember, right? Like I got these sprites for a lamb and I had the music of Mary it had a little lamb going on. And then the teacher was like, well, what? who is this savant? And I'm like, no, this is, this is nothing. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. And um, so, you know, to be an RO, you had to be an ET, which is a electronic technician, work on uh, all kinds of, uh, actually at that time, they, they claim, I don't know who they are, but the claim was, that um, it was like uh, uh, one of the best microservice uh, programs in the, in the country, uh, just under MIT. And I don't know how true that was, but that's what they told us. Um, so I learned a ton about micro uh, chips and, and all kinds of things. Uh, when I left, uh, I started, when I left the Navy, that is, I started doing some uh, repair work on, on, uh, on digital equipment. 
and then decided I'd rather do software. And from then it was just easy. Like this is, this has been in my blood for a long time. I, I can't even imagine doing anything else. I love it. I love it when you can wake up and you're like, this is what, I, you know, there's a, there's a people aspect of things. We could talk about that if you want, but mm-hmm. what, you know, when it's a day of just heads down, solving a problem, writing code, I love waking up on those days. It's like the best job ever. Like people pay me to do this. This is great. I love it. Um, it, so. it's, it seems to be, you know, and, and I mean, I've only ever been in software, so I, I can't compare this to, to other occupations, but it seems very conducive to a flow state. Not that we get mm-hmm. into it as often as maybe we'd like, but uh, it, it's funny. I had a, a guest lecturer over the weekend who, who missed my session because he got sucked into a problem and he just forgot yeah. because he was so, he was just on a roll, right? And and, yeah. and we had this conversation afterwards and I told him, I said, hey, it's happened to me. You know, you just, you get into that state and you're just clicking clacking away and you're like, oh, I'm 45 minutes late for this thing. Oops. You know, yeah. time just kind of disappears. It, when, you know, I mean, again, I, we don't always get that opportunity, but but I'm, I'm genuinely curious, is that a unique aspect of what we do or I don't know, but, but no, I know exactly I know. what you mean. Yeah, I would guess that it's not, but, um, but I'm glad to hear that everybody else, everybody else struggles with it. <laughs> like, where were you? Uh, in my head. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Now, the other thing that's fascinating to me is how many folks, at least of, of our generation, who kind of fell into this as kids and just started playing with it and, and just kind of fell in love with it. And, you know, the funny thing is my, my son, who just turned 14, had a design class where they did some programming. And he was telling me after, he's like, yeah, I really like this. This was a lot of fun. And I'm like, great. I'm happy to have you do more of this, you know, and, and over the Welcome years. Welcome to I'm, the team. Yeah. try to kind of you know get that that there and it, it's it does have to just kind of have to happen but right oh it's good times that's fantastic to hear yeah. absolutely i have a son that's struggling as well and and all of a sudden he's picking up python and asking questions so i love to hear that yeah it's great oh python that's great right. maybe you can introduce him to another programming language i one of my grad students is big into Python. That's why I have to take a, a, a <laughs> to harass, yeah. Python. I have to harass him you know, for that. But, uh, uh, it's a great language to learn from I, and maybe even be productive in. I don't mean that it's not, but from a learning perspective, you know, it's like so you learn, teach someone Java. It's like public static void name. You're like, uh, right. pub, where do I start? Static. Right. Um, What's okay. that mean? Well, just trust me, you need it. <laughs> like, right, <okay>. right. <laughs> No, that's a great point. I, I do think that's one of the things I appreciate about, well, frankly, like JavaScript, you know, that, that barrier of entry there is so much lower in terms of oh, something yeah. super basic, like, you know, the hello world example. And then you contrast that with, with Java. You know, there, there was a tweet going around, like, tell me you program Java without saying I'm a Java programmer. And I think one of my contributions was hello world almost fits in a tweet, you know, because it feels like that's kind of, very verbose to do something as simple as, you know, just print out these three characters. That's my life. Exactly. So I know you, you've also been very busy in, in things like scouting and things of that nature. Uh, yep. What kind of stuff do you do outside of playing with computers? Tech? Well, I'm, I'm, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> well, how long do we have i, could, I think i could contribute yeah. to that that i, I, I have stories I, I, <laughs> uh-oh uh i do a lot of things I, I i like to stay active um and so like um and, and whenever i learn something i like to I, I don't just learn it i go i go i go deep and i don't know what is in me that causes that i i, I think it is also a trait my father had so um, where you get obsessed for a period of time and then, you know, that's your thing. So for me, uh, I, I, my dad was a scuba diver or master. He was a master instructor. So I became a diver when I was 12 or 13 or so. And, and then, um, but, th- but then what, three, four years ago, I became a dive master as well. Um, not because it's a career. It's just cause it's like, I don't know. You're just like, well, let's level up and learn some, you know, I just always feel like in particular with something like that, the more you know, the safer you are, sure. right? Like that. The more you know, the more helpful you can be. The more you know, the more uh, the, the safer you are. It just seems reasonable, uh, which is the same thing I did with aviation. I became a pilot in '98, um, and almost immediately went into my instrument training. And uh, if you look at the facts, and I haven't looked at them for more than 10 years, but back then, 
um, you know, the, 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 uh, a pilot having an issue uh, was significantly higher if they were a private pilot than if they were an instrument rated pilot. I'm like, all right, well, let's, 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 gotcha. let's do that. So, um, and I've, I co-own a plane with three other people. So I've got a plane I go up in every once in a while and, uh, and, and guess what? I can quarantine in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to fly so, um, and then, yeah, I, I, uh, used to be in Boy Scouts for a while, for a long time, probably what, 16, 17 years. And there I would, I became a scoutmaster for 10. Um, and I always did the cool stuff. Uh, so I did, I was a rock climbing rappel instructor for a while. So we, you know, you know, rappel and climb rocks and, I was the aviation merit badge counselor along with computer merit badge counselor, of course. And uh, there was something else I don't remember. But well, and then, you know, I guess for fun, like the thing I do now for fun and have been for maybe, I don't know, at least four years, is I try to pretend like I'm a chef. So I take on like whatever, whatever like a super advanced chef would be. So like one of my favorites would be Thomas Keller. Oh, yeah. uh, with the French Laundry. Um, of course, Gordon Ramsay. And all, you, know, you, you could go through the list. Uh, and I, I try to recreate what they create. Uh, so I, I, I literally chef it up. And the, probably the next major purchase we'll have in our home is to deck out the kitchen a little bit because it's, yeah. yeah. Now, I've so. also seen a video of you jumping out of an airplane. From a, great <laughs> it was a few years ago. What yeah, yeah. possessed you to jump out of a perfectly functioning aircraft and, and not just right? skydive, but like, yeah, let's go up to altitude. Let's, let's do one of those high altitude jumps. So I didn't even know that was an option, to, so to speak. Uh, I, uh, our uh, mutual friend of ours, uh, uh, Michael, uh, he's been on the show. Carducci. What's that? He's been on the show. <laughs> oh, he's been on the show. Yeah, Carducci. Carducci did it, and I'm like, what? This is a thing. And then it was way too expensive. And then they had a discount. I'm like, that's enough of a discount. I'll do it's it. It's a sale. So I, I want to say, was that maybe four years ago? Oh, it was oh. 2016. I do mm -hmm. remember that. Uh, it was uh, Easter weekend. And maybe that was why the discount, they couldn't get people to show up on Easter. But I'm like, okay. So we jumped out at 30,500 feet. It was a high altitude, low open, or halo jump, they call it. And uh, it was fantastic. It makes me crazy. Oh, and important to know, super important to know, Earth appears to be round. Oh, good. Good pro tip. Yeah, pro tip. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, see, that that's one of those. There are several things of which I, I would never, well, I never say never, but the, the amount of money that would, would require to get me to do it is, is immense, right? That and like, like uh, bungee jumping, the same kind of thing. Like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm yeah. Good. I mean, yeah. it doesn't yeah. help that I'm, 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 I'm a little larger than you are. And, and so gravity <laughs> does indeed have a little more effect on me. At least it, uh, I perceive it that way. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm sure some physicists. Uh, we got the correct. same level of acceleration, dude. <laughs> well, there's air resistance, right? Isn't that something? I don't know. But it, it, it gives me pause, put it that way. Uh, well, you want to hear something funny? You'll laugh at this. Then. Uh, I'm a I'm a little concerned with heights. Like I, I bungee jumping seems scary to me. But <laughs> says the licensed pilot who's halo jumped. <laughs> Those are different. Oh, totally Very different. different. Yeah. Oh, totally different. <laughs> so how did how did you get into piloting? Because Mark Heckler was on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he also oh. is got his pilot like pilot's license. Is it something? Is it required yeah. in Missouri if you're in technology <laughs> to become a licensed pilot, or is it is it in the water? How does this work? Yeah, you know, he uh, I, I was super I was super happy to hear that he got his. Uh, he checked in with me for a long time before he actually got it. So he we we've been in touch. Um, and oddly, he, he might be more um, passionate or more at least socially involved than I am because sure. he started connecting me with like these circles, you know, these social circles of uh, pilots. I'm like, ah, I, I, I fly because I like to fly. I don't right. want to talk to anybody. I don't like people. <laughs> what are you nuts? <laughs> Yeah, so he's he's awesome, and um, you know, I, it's just something I was interested in for so long. I I think when I was in, now this goes back years, but when I was in high school, I, if he would have asked me, I think I would have wanted to be a a, a naval uh, aviator. Sure, um, that would have been that would have been the bomb. So, uh, it, you know, it's one of those things that um, it's like way too expensive. And then it's like, and then if you have money, then it takes up way too much time. And right. at some point you need both those things together. Um, and it's really paid off. Like for me, it's, I feel like it's been, I don't know, we hit, we had a, a, a corporate uh, engineering week. So 
the the November before the pandemic started, so a year plus ago. And I'm like, and then I'll, I don't know what changed because they were like, we're not going to pay for you to fly yourself. But somehow I talked them into it. So I flew from Missouri out to, we were having this uh, engineering week in Las Vegas. So I, I landed out in Las Vegas and I spent the entire week just flying over the Grand Canyon, taking wow. people on fun trips. And it, it I got to tell you, it's an amazing experience to be just a thousand, uh, eight, uh, a thousand feet above the, essentially the rim. And uh, yeah, it's like, there's just little things. Well, that, and yeah, there's just a number of experiences that you're like, wow, this is just incredible. So. Yeah, no, I, well, I think we've always had that fascination with flight because it, it's just you see a bird and you're like, oh man, how do you do that? And then, like, hey, wait, I could do that. I just have to get in this this plane and learn how to do it. But it, I have a a guy I've played golf with a few times who went down that path, but then after a while just kind of stopped flying. And I I talked to him about it one day and I said, you know, why why aren't you flying anymore? And he said, well, you know, if I take a couple weeks off golf and I come out here and I play, I just play poorly. If I take a couple weeks off flying. And I go up and I make a mistake. I hurt myself or, you know, worse. So you know, he, he sort of looked at it from that perspective that there's kind of a, this ongoing, you must keep up with it or else you lose some of those instincts, some of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I like it. I, I, I get what he's saying. And, and, you know, if you ever, like, if you can, this is hard. It's hard to judge your own skill, right? It's just sure. hard. Actually, I wouldn't even call it skill. A skill is important, of course, but it's hard to judge your own awareness. Like, is your awareness different than it was before? And, and that can have a huge impact on, on lots of things. Um, so, but if you're aware enough to know that this is not something you could maintain, right? then what a mature position to be in. Uh, that's, that's super awesome. I, I, you know, there's a couple of things I can't imagine when I will give them up, if ever. And one is programming. I just love, love it. And the other is flying. I, um, yeah, I, there's other things that will probably fall off me first, but those two things are staying. We have to come to grips with our own our own mortality that way too. And then, oh wait, I can't pull this off anymore. You know, I I joke that as you get older, the hardest part about getting older is that you remember what it was like to be younger. You know, it's it's those moments of boy, why is my shoulder sore? And you're like, oh, I slept wrong. Like what? You know, and then it's because you remember when you were 20 or 25 or 18 and you could just do whatever and your body was fine with it. And now, like, oh, I'm a little stiff. What'd you do? I laid on the couch too much, you know? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. We just went to a soccer game on when, uh, no, on Sunday. And uh, again, these are 10 year olds, but there's a, there's a young man who ends up like kicking like across his entire body, kicking the ball behind him. And, and and when he did that move, I was like, ouch, that would hurt so bad. <laughs> that right, would hurt so right. much. <laughs> and I'm like, that was damn good, man. <laughs> my, my son is a keeper. And in the fall before the snow fell, he and I would go up to the local park where they have some nets up and I would just kick soccer balls at him until, you know, he got too cold or we just decided to go in. And He was the wrong color. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the thing that amazes me is, is how, uh, you know, I mean, obviously I don't, pick a soccer ball all the time so that's kind of a, a unique move for me but mm. it's amazing how sore you get after kicking at your kid for an hour and a half and you're like why does that hurt oh because i kick, you know for an hour and a half at my kid when i'm not 22 sadly <laughs> that's funny yeah so, so you want to be a professional chef have you picked up any habits during the pandemic that you're really hopeful will maintain post pandemic whatever post pandemic normal is which as we talked about in the pre-show Probably isn't what it was before. Habits? You mean habits in general, or? Well, like so, or I started baking bread habits. once the snow fell because I couldn't go play golf mm. and ride my bike outside. So I started baking bread, which mm. is surprisingly, I mean, easy to do because I've managed to pull it off. The downside of baking bread is once your family gets used to having fresh baked bread, then there becomes this: when are you baking bread again? <laughs> And can I eat the bread right now? No, it just came out of the oven. I mean, I, I practically have to lock the bread away from my 14 year old because he wants to eat it while it's hot. I'm like, no. Oh. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I think as far as food goes, I don't know. Um, I, I've gotten into this weird habit of like making even the simplest of things from scratch. Um, I don't, that sounds weird, right? But like, um, and I don't know if I'll continue this. I, sure. I, in some ways, I hope I do, but. 
um, what's an example? Oh, just like um, sour cream uh, or like a crema. Um, just literally make it from from scratch, uh, which is nothing other than cream and buttermilk. But sure. uh, it's like the whole process. So so this leads me into my current like fascination, which you're you're gonna go way too far with, I'm sure. But I'm like, you know what? Um, I really want to make my own bourbon. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so, so I'm looking at getting a, a grinder to grind. You know what I mean? Like the whole the whole thing. But um, and then, of course, the first thing I run into is that uh, uh, distilling is federally not legal. Okay. Uh, so to have a distiller, you have to have a legal reason. And I'm like, well, I, I have a CPAP and I have a need for a distilled water like all the time. So like that seems like a good enough reason. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't gotten to that level, to be fair. But but it's an interesting reminder of how quickly you can geek out on on literally anything. I, I made the mistake of tweeting out to some friends last week, should I get into pour over coffee? You know, I'm a huge espresso mm. fan. I've been pulling my own shots at home forever. I, yeah. Matthew McCullough is the one that got me into that. But it, it's amazing how quickly any of these things goes from, well, sure, you could you could do the entry level thing, but what you really want is this. Well, no, what you really want is this. And, you know, right. oh, no, no, that, that $100 grinder? No, 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 no. You want the $300 hand grinder. I'm like, well, I don't want to grind it by hand. You know, it's it just, it's amazing how quickly right. it escalates yeah. that escalated yeah. quickly <laughs> but it's it's fun yeah, too you know it also gives you a deep i remember the first time i pulled together a i i, I remember it was a pastry of some sort like it was like a uh, i i don't remember but uh i do remember it had vanilla bean in it like you know freshly scraped off vanilla nice. um and it was amazing but my first, it was my realization, and this was just like a year or two ago, it was a realization of how is it possible that um, that these things are as cheap as they are when you go to a restaurant, right? Sure. Like, like all, all of a sudden I had this deep appreciation for, look, if, if, if I would have charged uh, what it cost me to make this, then I, I would have gotten, I would have recouped no money for my efforts. It would right. have just been material cost. And how do they do that? And so, right. like, I really do have this appreciation for like really good chefs and really good food and what it takes to do that. And then, I, and then I'm still lost to how the economics works, really. Um, unless you're at a, like a, you know, a, you go to the French Laundry. That's seven hundred and fifty dollars a plate. I get how they make money. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, a lot of yet, but... <laughs> a, a lot of restaurants don't. I mean, they they're they're right on that razor's edge. I think that's that's part of the challenge. Yeah, you know, thin margins. Yeah, absolutely. Food. Yeah, yeah. Well, and actually, to your earlier question, you know, what what am I taking out of this? Um, maybe that's it, right? Like I've been whenever so we've been frequenting some some restaurants nearby for essentially carry out or yeah. or what have you. And even with that, you know, like I would normally give a nice tip if we were eating in, but it's not normally that way when I'm eating out or carrying out, taking mm -hmm. home. Uh, but we've been very generous because of, well, so we have to, like, I, right. I think it's important, but I think, I hope that carries forward, right? Like, I think, um, uh, not that I want to eat at my place all the time, but I, I think the generosity of knowing that, you know, yeah. you're being served here and there's a community that, that, you know, uh, probably doesn't make out as well that ought to be I hope, yes i hope it helps us appreciate these local places that have struggled and that don't have these massive resources that some giant chain company might have and right you know what concerns because i certainly saw this in the twin cities there were very well regarded restaurants that and, and who knows what all goes into some of these decisions maybe they just you know decided they're done with it they want to move on this is a convenient excuse but but they shut down and they're done you know they're they're gone now yeah. and yeah once that place closes there's no getting it back there's no reopening it under new management it's gone and yeah. you know, I, I i that's what i think is is sad you know beyond obviously the the loss of human life is how many of these sort of local institutions aren't going to make it to the other side and you know to your to your point christine and i we've we've tried at least once a week to frequent some place nearby and and thank goodness for the delivery services the you know food as a service is not not a terrible thing but Hopefully that helps keep them, you know, through this, so that when we're on the other side and back to normal, they're still here. Yeah, yeah. I have, yeah, I, a great point. Um, I have no, I don't have any doubts 
that uh, you know, if organizations or restaurants go out of business, that they will be replaced or be recreated. Like if, if that's what you do sure. and you're really good at it, you're going to do it again under another umbrella of some sure. sort. Uh, I, I really have no question about that. Uh, it's still sad. Like I, um, now what will, what will be interesting is I think there's going to be a lot of vacant office spaces among yes. other things that I don't think will be replaced. Like I, I'm, I'm puzzled as to what will happen with that. And so I think real estate, especially the commercial real estate is going to be a question mark. Yeah. That's, that's a great point. You, you and I were talking about that a little bit in the pre-show, but you know, like you, I've been remote now for, for years. This really wasn't a huge shift other than I'm not getting on airplanes, but for my wife, this was a big move. You know, she's been working yeah. from home now for a year, basically. Our kid has been learning from home now for basically a year. And yeah. what's fascinating to me is what will normal look like in, in six months, a year? I, I don't think we're going back to Monday through Friday, nine to five. Well, I, in fact, I know uh, in consultancies where traditionally they're 100% travel, they're now sort of saying, at least internally, oh, yeah, no, we're not going back to that. You know, it, there will still be some travel, obviously, but it's, it's you know, this 100% part, I think, might be gone, at least for, for some of us, maybe, maybe not 100%. Yeah. How great is that? Yeah. I still remember, what was it? April maybe. So it's almost a year now, but I remember like teaching in India from St. Louis, Missouri. And right. I'm like, this is right. great. Right. <laughs> like, I love this. I mean, there, there's trade-offs. <laughs> I, I desperately miss visiting these places and, and oh. seeing the things you can only see when you're there, you know, the yeah. food you can get when you're there, the people that are there. But there is something to the effect of, wait, I just walked down a flight of stairs and I'm at the event and, oh, now it's over and I go back to my living room as opposed to, well, I've got 18 hours of flying and I'm going to be, you know, exhausted for yeah. three days while my body readjusts to this new time zone. I, I do think it's allowed us to reach more people than we would normally. You know, right. I, I know for some of our events, we've been able to open them up basically everybody. And we've had viewers from all around the world as opposed to, well, if you don't live in the city or, or you don't have a travel budget, you can't come. And I, I do think that's a really interesting sort of democratization of it. I don't know how much that holds once we're in a new normal. I, I think there's probably going to be an interesting mix of virtual and in-person things. Yeah, no, I'm with you hundred percent on that. I agree uh, on all accounts. Like I, yeah. I really enjoy the hospitality that most um, conferences provide and, and the people there and just something about, you know, being with somebody mm -hmm. that somehow is different. Oh, hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I, I miss, I miss like say bumping into you in line, checking into a hotel at midnight, <laughs> arguing with the front desk about whether or not they have any rooms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like who's sleeping with who tonight? <laughs> right. Yeah. That, 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 so, so true story. Um, <laughs> Ken and I were roommates at one event because when we showed up, I was just behind him at the hotel and they had no rooms at the inn. I somehow had one blocked out for me. And so we got a rollaway bed. And so Ken and I were roomies for a couple nights, I think, something like that. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It, it, was, it was good times. It was good times. <laughs> is, there, is there any place that you're excited to get to or that you're like... Once we can travel again, I'm I'm booking tickets and can't wait to get back. Is there any place you're really excited to visit? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's it's a weird thing. Like, there's places you miss because you, uh, but but there's places I still want to see, right? right? So there are some things. There are some places I still want to see. Uh, I think just before the pandemic hit, uh, the very last conference I was at was in February of last year. So it was just before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was at J Focus, and was introduced to some folks that were from Japan and Tokyo, and we were talking about going over and and and, and talking there. And I'm super excited. I, I've not been. I would love to go. Um, I just want to. I'm one who loves and appreciates different cultures and different experiences, and I just would love to just be a part of that. Right. So that's one. Um, and then my wife and I have. Uh, been talking about for a while now trying to get down to South Africa. So uh, Cape Town will probably be uh, somewhere on, on the to-do list whenever we can break free again. Yeah. yeah, I can, I speak highly of Cape Town. We had the good fortune of having an event there two years ago. I don't, it's, it's hard to remember time anymore. Christina and I actually had a debate. <laughs> this was last week about what month it was and whether or not we'd <laughs> missed our anniversary. 
you know, it, it affects all of us in different ways. But Cape Town is awesome. I loved Cape Town. It, it's beautiful. There, there are uh, jealous. It, it's a very cool place, and I can recommend an awesome coffee shop. So as, as people know, our superpower is we find great coffee in whatever city we happen to be in. So I, I, I have thoughts. So. Thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you'll know the the type of person I married when I tell you that one of our goals is um, she wants to dive with great white sharks in a cage. So I'm like, so uh, that's part of our mission. <laughs> but the coffee's going to help before and after. So, uh, well, I would think some of that whiskey you wanted to still would help before. <laughs> And probably after to calm your nerves. I th this strikes me as very similar to jumping out of a perfectly functioning aircraft. Why w would you want to be an appetizer for a great white shark? What what what's strong? Well, there, 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 there should be a barrier between us. I'm really hoping, and that well, it's strong I, enough to it's withstand. a barrier. But <clears throat> it reminds me a little bit of we we did a road trip where we went through this this park where there's like a family of of i don't know what's bison and buffalo i don't know if they're the same or different but but there was this herd the in there and they are not concerned about you like they they just they'll stand on the road and you know you can literally be stopped for an hour until this massive creature decides to move and if you're smart you don't approach them because they're big and they're mm -hmm. fast and you are neither and, and, and they so, got horns yeah yeah they're they're big creatures. <laughs> but but you know i've got these pictures where, where these things are four or five feet away from us but i'm not worried about them like biting me um but you know right. i mean to each their own i guess <laughs> no i i didn't know i knew you were a diver i didn't realize you wanted to dive with something that wants to eat you but that's cool that's how i knew i met my 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 uh soulmate <laughs> The system works. Did you did, have you bought her flowers recently? Did I mention I bought my wife flowers today? Yeah, yeah, good. yeah, yeah. They, they weren't thrown at you. That's so not nice. yet. Yeah, I mean, I just... it, the day's young. I got, I got time. That is the one thing I missed about about having a, a job in an office because where I used to work, there was a farmers market that would show up two or three days a week mm. during the summer, and I would routinely go grab a bunch of flowers because they were fresh cut and they were beautiful and they were very reasonably priced, uh. and so I kind of got in that habit of doing that. And so now that I don't have a real job, I have to sort of remind myself every so often, oh, I should swing by the flower shop. And You're a good man. I do roughly the same thing. So yeah. yeah. It, it's simply making deposits for the inevitable stupid thing I will do at some point. I like to have a few of those credits, you know, just in the bank. It's the only responsible thing to do, to say the least, to say the least. Sounds, so. sounds like wisdom. I try. I try. So you, you, you mentioned French Laundry, you mentioned high-end chefs. Is there a restaurant that you miss desperately from your travels? Is there any place that you're ready to book a ticket? Ooh. Well, yeah, so um, one of the places I've always wanted to go, which is reasonably closest in Chicago, is Alenia. Yeah. Um, um, and Grant used to work. He's the chef, main. He's the head chef there. He used to actually work at the French Laundry, so there's some connection. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been there yet, and uh, I hear so many great things. I I have his book uh, or his you know recipes, and I have recreated some things. But I want to know how close. You know, I want to I want to actually experience it. So I would love to go there. Um, outside of that, you know, uh, what, wherever travels take us, I often will look for at night. Um, at, at a top restaurant where wherever that is if if, if it makes sense mm -hmm. um, traveling with there are people we have in common like Neil Ford who are, are probably probably his response he's probably responsible for sucking me into the world of food yeah. um, but he will put you know a, a Michelin star or two maybe three on the road trip and and whenever I have an opportunity I love to uh, get involved with that. Yeah, he, he certainly was was the carrier pigeon for me to get involved in in knocking down Michelin stars. And there there was I had one stretch, I don't know how many years ago this was, but I had just enough travels in just the right order that I ended up knocking down a bunch of stars over the course of like this three week period. And it was mostly unintentional. A couple of them just sort of like popped up like, Hey, we got a reservation. Do you want to join us? Sure. You know, and, and so I did manage to to toss that at him. You know that I think I beat him. I don't think he's ever done quite that many in a row. But but uh, I miss that. <laughs> That's what I'm excited about. I'm I'm 
borderline already trying to make reservations, hoping that we can start traveling again in the fall, because I, I would very much like to be able to do that for, for my wedding anniversary, which I think is in oh, the fall. Okay. I don't know. I could, I could, I'm, I'm getting a look that says I should know the answer to that, but it's probably fine. It'll be fine. Probably fine. Probably fine. Just more flowers. You'll be fine. I guess, I guess I have to go run another errand. I'll, uh, I'll be back. <laughs> Uh, well, my, my my wife's always been a uh, I, I would guess that she's always been a Francophile. So we, we and we were in oh on our way back from J Focus last February we were in Paris for a um, couple of days, but it was only a brief moment. And uh, she's anxious to get back. I'm sure we'll eat more nice in oh, yeah. there as well. So. It's hard to eat poorly in Paris. Yeah, you have to go out of your way to eat poorly. There. Yeah, that's right. It is the exception, I think. Yeah, I, th I think the rule is if a restaurant is open, it's got good food because the. Oh my gosh, I was surprised. Like I was expecting to have something amazing at, of course, an amazing restaurant, but uh, just just a, a roadside cafe, right? Getting a mushroom soup or something. I mean, you're like, wow, what is in this? <laughs> like, it's so good. Well, I remember one of my first trips to to France. I remember being in the lounge on the way out, and the the bread and and the other assorted food items in the lounge was very good. I mean, obviously not as good as what you'd get at at a nice sit down restaurant, but compared to what you normally find in an airport lounge in the states, at least, you know, head and shoulders. You know, no no comparison at all. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I do miss that from our our you know, previous life and. You know, it'll be an interesting sort of trade-off between getting to do some of those things and then not being able to do some of the stuff at home. So interesting to see how that needle gets threaded. But <laughs> that's a future problem, as they say. Right. Is is there uh, like a movie or a TV show or anything you've been kind of binging during this time period? Is there anything that you're like, thank goodness for this? It's helped me get through the the year of you know social isolation that we've all gone through. Ah, uh, that's a great question. I have been going through a lot of material, but I don't know if anything's really like, um, like you know. So uh, I don't even know how this got started, but I'd say several months ago I started just walking a lot, and nice. and and so Sarah picked up a treadmill, which helps out a lot. So I get about fourteen thousand steps in a day or so. Um, and during that time, I'm almost always listening. I go through a ton of podcasts. You know what? Yeah. That's probably the thing. I, I've gone through a, a ton of podcasts I'm really, uh, I just love. One of them is the Jordan Harbinger Show. Harbinger okay. Show. Very, very uh, interesting stuff. There's another one called The Knowledge Project. Uh, just just top-notch kind of leadership type stuff. Um, the last uh netflix shows that i watch actually it was because of one of those podcasts it's like oh they have the guys from narcos like those real guys right uh in, in like having a interview and i'm like what is this narcos thing so i watched all of narcos uh which was uh interesting fascinating You're like oh man like this is life this is real life how did we even let this happen um but yeah uh, yeah, um, I wouldn't say anything stood out. Sure. I, I, clearly, the beginning of the pandemic, I watched the Tiger King like okay. everyone else. I suppose okay. that was uh, it. Was one of those things where you're like, you're like, I'm I'm done watching this, and you're like, wait a minute, what, what is what, where's this go? You know, I'm like, why am I watching this? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, it, it's fascinating because we've been sort of taking Everett through series of shows that that we watched that that were helpful for us like we're watching friends although we've kind of stalled out the joys yeah. of a teenager he kind of hits these points where he's not interested and then he goes to watching something else but right i gotta tell you having lived through both the network television it's on when it's on versus the binging i'll take the binging any day of the week you know, being able to watch four or five in a row and just stay in that you know, you're like, oh, that's right. That character is. You see those thread lines so much more easily than when it's spread out over the course of multiple, multiple years. But uh, yeah, you know, and then well, when you watch something that's current, you're like, oh, we're out. What do we do now? What, what, what do we do now? We have this cliffhanger <laughs> thing again. I haven't had a cliffhanger now in in months, and now I have a cliffhanger. I don't understand. You know, of course, the yeah, downside yeah. is it's so easy to. Well, let's just watch one more, and then it's, you know, eleven thirty midnight, like. We should really go to bed. <laughs> well, if, if you haven't watched it, I have to plug Ted Lasso. That has been... Oh, 
man, the salve that was of the such soul. a joy to watch. I, yes. I, I, I had friends that uh, pushed that that advertised that, if you will, and I'm like, eh, let's watch it. I could not. For, for, I loved it. Loved it. Every the, every everything about it. Yeah. Uh, I thought, well, here's here's high quality. Uh, here's um, it, there's almost this element of uh, Mr. Rogersness to it, uh, but yet there's this uh, mature, you know, thread line of uh, or thread of. Uh, of advice that kind of runs through it or just like a way of life. Like, yeah, absolutely. That, that might be my favorite, um, uh, series that I've watched in the last couple months for sure. Yeah. There were so many times that we rewound because it was so laugh out loud, funny. It's like, <laughs> I need to see that scene again. And just kudos to that writing team and that cast. I, you know, I can't, can't well, wait for season the two. Tea. The comments on the T, right? It's like, oh, it's brown, it's nasty. Yep. <laughs> Still is. Yep. Still is. Oh, my God. Hey, there's, oh, there's so many lines. It's just just amazing. And I, I am under the impression that, that this is probably going to have a relatively short run just because the lead actor, I don't think, wants to commit to doing this for 10 years, which is unfortunate. But I, I will consume all of it as it comes oh. out for sure. I, uh, you know, another one of the brilliance of that show is this, this fun, like, it, it's really great they can make it work. Yeah. This fun dynamic between the West and the, essentially Europe and, and or UK in general, and, and American style. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was, like, wildly successful. Yes. I have, my, my uncle is uh, from Manchester, and he was the one that advertised it to me, but he, the, the humor he gets in it is in some ways slightly different or sure. you know what I mean? And uh, he's been making fun of Americans in exactly the same way for so long <laughs> that I'm like, Oh, this is what he means. <laughs> oh, it's nice. really great. Nice. <laughs> well, let me throw a few lightning round questions at you here just for, for fun. Yeah. What's your favorite meal? What's your comfort meal? Your go-to meal, especially if you're trying all these fancy recipes, is there anything you're like, Oh yeah, that's, that's my Tuesday night special. Uh, it depends on what we're after. If you're if, okay. if, if you're after hit like I'm I'm gonna hit these fire right. But if you're after something quick like that's that's the thing. I just want something quick. Um, there is a so it's it's not common. It's expensive to find. Uh, but uh, saffron is not a common mm. ingredient you'd see in a kitchen. But a saffron cream noodles is just Ooh. with with my own homemade noodles right. Like you, you're making everything. Um, so that's a quick go-to, uh, and yeah, again, quicker if you're not making your own noodles, but if, or if you have some on standby, but because that's that's like 15 minutes of just kind of throw it together or something. Uh, if I were to go for like, hey, we're gonna have a date night, like this is gonna be awesome. Uh, there is a um, braisened short rib recipe that I've perfected now that is just nuts. It is so good. Um, it's really good. So that is, and, and if you can, and you can actually, the fun part is you can combine those. It makes a great combination so that when you're eating it, oddly, uh, it almost has this, um, what do you call that? Uh, a stroganoff like oh, sure. um, element to it that you wouldn't get otherwise. Right. Uh, it's, it's really good. You know, there's an airport yeah. pretty close to my house, right? Um, <laughs> I, I do need, need to get, get some hours there. in. <laughs> You know, literally, I'll, I'll, I can I could walk over if you wanted. I uh, wouldn't even need to get a car, but you know, perfect. Throw your road bike in the perfect. back. We'll we'll go for a ride. We'll uh, have some bring my food. short ribs. Right, bring bring some of them ribs. You know, and uh, yeah, we can grill. I, I'll bake bread. You know, it, it'll work out. You know, you know what? Here's been the fun part of like uh, chefing is that um, two things that that come immediately to mind. One is. The, the short rib recipe that I originally got, and I've kind of modified it. This is yeah. how I work on a recipe. Uh, it's cut against the bone, and there's a frank, there, there's a there's a specific name for that. And when you go in and talk to a chef, like or I'm sorry, a butcher, like you kind of know the quality of a butcher when they know these sure. words, like that you can talk their lingo, right? And so like it, it's just it's just a very different world. And then the second part of that is I had this recipe that in, that had a need for a. Um, uh what's the term uh, it's it's like a venison um sauce oh, sure. and uh, you can't find that you can't find those bones yeah, I, it, and the reason why is because if any butcher shop has them they already have a contract with a restaurant a local restaurant that's high end sure. and all of their bones go there well i was able to take a, a talk a butcher shop into giving me a, a pound and a half of those bones 
uh, because I couldn't get him anywhere. He just like, oh, you know, we're we're sorry, this is so hard. Let me do this for you. And nice. so like you begin to like know people sure. in this special group, right? Well, that's so, awesome. Anyway, how about fire, pie fire versus away. pie versus cake? Oh, it's and you know, pie day is coming up. I'd have to go cake, but I don't think I'd go either way, right? Like oh. I, I would rather have like a cheese. I guess it's a cake, but cheesecake is not quite either That's a one. Good point. But I also make this amazing uh, vanilla cream tart. Um, that it, I don't know what category you put it in, okay. but it's like the best. Well, bring one of those along with the ribs, <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll categorize it. We'll, we'll figure out where where it lives. Now, you and I both live in the middle of this this great country. Uh, oceans or mountains? Oh, that's tough. Depend. I like them both. Yeah. I love them both. Um, I if I had to live with one or the other, I'd probably go ocean. Okay. Yeah. My my son keeps trying to make a trade with Colorado, a thousand lakes for a couple of your teeners, and uh, you know they're just not interested. I don't get it. You know, you think they that high desert they'd like some lakes, but no accounting for taste. Now we've right. talked a lot about food because it's lunchtime. But food trucks or Michelin stars? What would you rather knock down? Oh, that's another one of those challenging ones. Uh, I, 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 if I had to pick one or the other and live without one, I would pick the Michelin stars. But I, I've, it's, it's just as much fun, I think, right. at a different kind of fun to go through like San Francisco and hit the, you know, Senor, yep. uh, whatever that uh, truck is. That's like, oh, that is like the best slinger you can imagine. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's a tough one. I hear you. But uh Great question. How about uh, Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Uh, well, if you take out the last season, probably Game of Thrones. But if you threw in the last season, uh, I don't know. I, I do think that the Lord of the Rings probably has a higher um, um, uh, cultural value mm, to society. Sure. Uh, yeah. And I, I see value in that. I, gotcha. I think there's a lot of comparisons to that. I don't know. I love, I love, I love those both, of course, as well. So. I really wish that season had been longer, or they'd split the last season of Game of Thrones. Into oh, totally agree with you. Yep, I agree with that completely. That's, that's my biggest complaint with the last season. But they didn't ask us. Yeah, it felt rushed. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, action, comedy, or drama? If you're looking for something to watch, I think I would go action comedy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's. it's at least for me during the pandemic, I've been reaching towards comedy, you know, the, yeah. the, the sort of uh, deep dive drama kind of things. Like I just don't have the emotional energy for that. I, I don't need, I don't need that. You know, we're, we're working through some things. Like we're watching like better call Saul where there's obviously a lot of drama there and it, it's almost like mm. anxiety inducing, like, Oh God, I, he's going to get mugged, you know? And you're just like, no, I don't need something <laughs> bad to happen. Just let something good happen. So that's again why Ted Lasso is you know the salve of our soul during this time, and you know may yeah. may 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 it have fifteen seasons, although I know it won't. But... <laughs> well, my friend, I, I we're over the hour. I don't want to keep you. I know you've got more important things to do than than hang out with me. But I genuinely appreciate getting a chance to catch up with you. It's been too long. I, the last time you and I were on a call, you had a power outage, and then I think like something happened, and I never got to see you after that. So. But yeah, I and I know. wasn't even in Dallas or Texas. So right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been way too long. I really enjoy it. Uh I can't wait to catch up. Again. I hope I hope we're in real in in the same room sometime in the near future. We don't have to be roommates, you know, even just to be able to have coffee with you would be <laughs> lovely or some of this whiskey would be good whether you distilled it or not would be fine. But uh well, if if people want to see more from you, hear more from you, get in touch with you, what what's what's the best way to to chat with Mr. Sipe? Yeah, uh, probably the easiest is just Ken Sipe, K E N S I P E at uh, at Twitter, and frankly everywhere, Ken Sipe yeah. at Gmail, Ken Sipe Twitter. Uh, if you're on Kate's uh, Slack, uh, also there, Ken Sipe. Awesome. awesome. Keeping it simple. Well, cool. Well, thank you, my friend. I really appreciate your time and, you know, have a great day. I'm, I'm delighted that spring is here. The days are getting longer and, you know, soon we'll be complaining about the heat. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't All wait. right. All right. Well, next week we are off, but then the week after it's the, I've got, oh, I've got Craig Walls coming in. So I'm very excited to hang out with Craig, Mr. Spring himself. And I'm sure we'll talk about 
programming Alexas and things of that nature. But uh, we will see you guys in a couple weeks. And thanks again, Mr. Sipe.